I'm Gold Derby editor Daniel Montgomery here with We Are Lady Parts star Anjana Vasan. Uh, you play Amina, uh, a shy guitarist who starts to come out of her shell uh, when she joins a punk band. Uh, now the character st struggles with stage fright, but you as an actor and musician have a lot of uh, experience working on stage. Uh, was that anxiety something you could relate to? Uh, or, or are you a lot more confident than Amina generally when you're on stage? Um, I think a lot of people are a lot more confident than Amina in real life. Um, I, I think I do um, relate to a level of anxiety that she she experiences, particularly like socially. I think I'm a more confident person when I perform, but not so much um, outside of, of acting. So I definitely dealt, um, felt like I could relate to that aspect of Amina. Um, there's definitely like a younger version of me in Amina that I could sort of channel. Um, but at the same time, I, I'm, there's been moments in my life, particularly um, doing theatre plays that I've definitely experienced something close to stage fright, never like debilitating, never to the point that I'm throwing up like Amina, thankfully, um, but pretty close to like, oh, I don't think I can do this. I can't overcome this. Like just a sense of like fear that over, because if you think about what you do too much, it's a weird job, but like, it's weird to go on stage and start like speaking to like hundreds of people. So if you start thinking about it logically, I don't think you can do it. Um, so yeah, so I can, I can relate to Amina, even though it's a very, um, even though her fear is a very extreme version. Uh, and, and you having a musical background yourself, how different was it kind of immersing yourself in the world of punk music and adapting, you know, your own uh, kind of musical experience to, to that uh, genre? What I was surprised by was that Amina was like a folk and country fan. Um, and that kind of just struck me because that is something that I enjoy and that's kind of what I play sort of folksy, bluesy country kind of songs um and so when I first you know got the script and I just saw the bio for it it was about punk band and I thought oh well I don't think I'm going to get this because I'm not very punk or cool enough to be on the show and then I realized the part that I was going up for was the nerdy folk you know um guitar playing nerd and I was like oh this this is up my street so it felt a little bit like a part that I never thought I would be able to play but was so so much in my DNA already. And um, Nija is a bit of a Paul Simon, Simon Garfunkel fan. And we kind of connected on that level. She found a video of me playing at a Paul Simon tribute night um, on YouTube. And then she, so I think it was one of those things where it just all kind of lined up perfectly. And I felt like, well, I have to play this part. Uh, and, and has, you know, the experience of being on the show kind of expanded your kind of musical uh, interests and, 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 you know, in terms of what you listen to and what you play uh, to more punk? Yeah, so I think I think definitely the punk side of it, you know, it's it's been an education because that's um, like Amina. She's a bit of a foreigner when it comes to that genre of music. Um, and that was really fun to explore. Um, and, and, you know, you find making my little Spotify playlist for the show, I found lots of cool music. Um, and the girls are a lot more into punk than I am. So like, they were definitely educating me a bit about that. Um, and another thing, of course, is, is really uh, uh, refreshing about the show is, is getting to see uh, you know, a group of Muslim women who are mm -hmm. very different from each other in terms of their uh, personalities and their experiences and their relationships with you know, their faith, um, and also just getting to see them explore what they're passionate about and, and what they want, uh, you know, in their lives individually. Yeah. Um, what was it like kind of getting to read, you know, when you first read the script, uh, when you first saw this story and, and who it was about and how it, you know, told their stories? Yeah, I think it's unusual to see even just one of these characters on a script. So to see five women lead it, just felt so refreshing but then the way she wrote it was so effortless and I think that was what really struck me was how easy it felt reading it on the page um, and like you said it's specific and I think it's out of that specificity you get something that feels relatable and universal and like you know you don't have to be a woman of color you don't have to be a Muslim woman in order to relate to any of these characters because they feel real like you feel like you know them 
Uh, and, you know, you made the pilot for the show uh, a few years ago, and then, uh, you know, the, uh, the rest of the C uh, series one, uh, you know, aired last year. What did you always, you know, were you always expecting that you would get to tell this, you know, more full story? Uh, and what was it like kind of in between that? Obviously, as you said, it started off as this little 10, 15 minute, you know, comedy blap, like a teaser pilot. And um, I always thought the script was very good, but when I saw what Nita did as a director on the piece, I was, you know, just really impressed by her work. And I knew that what she was going to write was going to be special. I never, I mean, she wrote a bit the part in, you know, with me in mind and a lot of the characters in mind because she, we went from the black into making the show and it was like a long process. But even then I still, I still didn't want to assume that the part was mine completely. And we had lots of conversations about, you know, why is it me? Should it be me? Why me? And um, I didn't want to take that for, for granted, but I knew that whatever she made was going to be special. Um, and there was just never any doubt in my mind that it would be special because I think you kind of know instinctively when you read something that this feels unique and new and, um, but also just really funny, like, really really funny and that's very hard to like tick all those boxes and be funny and be effortless all at the same time but no I, I never thought you know going from like doing a small little black you know what two over two years ago and then now the show um it still feels like a very small channel four show to me like I forget that it's out in the US I forget that the rest of the world have seen it um, because also we filmed it during a pandemic. So you forget that people actually, you don't know if people have seen it because you're in your little bubble. Um, you, you know, you do the show and then you work on another show and then you kind of forget what people's reaction is going to be until you start getting messages and reactions and you realize, oh, we're nominated for things. Like people actually love it. People actually have been watching it. Like, that's really cool. Uh, and and yeah, speaking of those nominations, uh, you know, the Gotham Award, uh, you were nominated uh, at the Independent Spirit Awards, you were nominated at the BAFTAs, uh, you're nominated. Uh, what, what was that recognition all like, uh, as it was, you know, coming in over these last few months, uh, just kind of to see people embracing the show and your performance in particular? I think it's taken some time. It's, it's taken a few of these events to then realize that people really love the show and have been watching it. Cause the first two times you go, this is a mistake. Someone made a mistake and I kind of crept through the cracks and I don't know how I landed this nomination, but, and then you realize that um, people are really moved by the show and are really affected by it and they love the show. And it's, 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 you know, it's a show that's still finding its audience because it's a bit of a cult show. You know, it's not, I think on paper, it's not a mainstream show. We're not, you know, there's no famous people in it. Um, so it's, I would never assume that it would get this kind of recognition because you assume that very mainstream shows are the ones that are going to get nominated. So I think the recognition that we have is very important for the show to continue finding its audience. And that's what I'm most excited about um, is, you know, there's not many shows that you do as an actor that you go, I really believe in everything that this show represents. Um, and it's not just a gig for any any one of us who's involved in it. It isn't just an acting gig. So for that kind of show to get recognition feels very special. Uh, and, you know, you're you're working with uh, this other group of actors who are playing your bandmates uh, and you're not only working with them as actors, you're also, of course, playing the music with them. Uh, what, what was what's it like developing that relationship with them as actors and also ba basically as the band? I think what Nita did brilliantly is she kind of thought about chemistry as she was casting it so it was one of those things where you know I was really nervous about when you know when I met the girls like would we get on like would we vibe as a band would we be believable and then sort of just automatically we just clicked and I think playing instruments and rehearsing for uh, rehearsing songs for the show just was a great way to actually get to know each other before we even you know before the scripts were even finalized before we even got to the point where we were rehearsing the scenes we were already learning the songs um and there was you know first we learned individually our instruments and then we got together and just played all the songs like we were playing a set list as a band and you're spending hours in the studio messing about and cracking jokes and having fun and also working very hard and by the end of the day you're friends and you you're not thinking about building chemistry it's just kind of organic and i think that's what by the time we got on set 
it felt like the cameras were rolling, but we weren't really thinking about the cameras. We were just being ourselves. I think that's the sort of magic of what needed us, you know, made that space possible. Uh, and, and the show also, uh, you know, leaves room for, uh, you know, these characters to to be emotional, to 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 have these, uh, you know, darker, heavier moments between each other as they, you know, experience yeah. conflict, like the scene where, uh, you know, after uh, the article comes out about the band and Amina decides, you know, just uh, quits the band uh, at that point. Um, what what was it like shooting those moments of of sort of tension and, and more conflict? It. It felt very believable, I think. It didn't feel like melodrama. It felt like something that would was um, felt natural to where the story was going. Um, it felt very hard to do those scenes. I think some of the more difficult days on set in terms of a, ch um, a challenging day for an actor was were the emotional scenes um, because we're also taking it from like a sitcom into something that maybe feels like a sitcom at the beginning and then it goes into something a bit more expansive and you know the way needed it almost cinematic and bigger uh, and you want to get the tone of that right um, and I think you know I, the days where you know we were doing when I was doing the scene where I had to sing Creep the day that you know we had to break up as a band those were the more the more challenging days on set um, or the day that you know she has a little stage fright moment when she's at the poetry slam because those moments have to feel real in order for you to really believe the journey of these characters if not they kind of ring as un untrue and a bit um like made up um and i think those were like really important for us to get the tone of that right so that you know it felt it felt like we've earned the audiences like trust and emotion when we then reunite as a band. I, and you mentioned that uh, the scene where, where Amina sings Creep and it's a moment where she's sort of in her own head uh, and that song really speaks to kind of how she's feeling like this isolation and, and alienation yeah. from people. What was it like when you read that in the script and, and how that sort of became a part of the show? Because it's a really unique moment and it's just like yeah. a, you're inside Amina's head there. Um, it was it was the moment for me that everything clicked in terms of how to play her and it was when I read it I went okay because all through the show you see her having these moments of you know um, stage fright and panic attacks and um, they happen in various degrees and it was about trying to chart them in different ways that it felt different every time we see her have a bit of an episode and at first we're laughing at her but you wanted you I always was sort of aware that I didn't want to just sort of make fun of fun of her or comment on it and I wanted to, it to feel real um so that moment of creep and the lyrics of the song it's such an emotional song like you just you know sing it simply and then the emotion just sort of happens it felt like the best way to tell the sort of inner life of what's going on in Amina without it being sort of obvious or expositional or literal um and, and it's like all through the show, she's trying to find her voice and she sort of can't. And I think that moment, it's a moment of like emotional release that is really earned. And it, it, it really helped me then go backwards and chart how to make, make that journey for Amina to, to, like I say, I keep saying to make it believable and real so that it's not just a sort of a laugh at her, point at her and laugh at her kind of comedy, if that makes sense. Uh, and another thing that I, I really appreciated about the series um, uh, yeah, in terms of Amina and her relationships is in a lot of like culture clash stories that we see about a variety of cultures, it's often about a character kind of rebelling against a strict family. Yes. But in this case, you have Amina's parents who are almost more supportive of her like <laughs> punk career than she is. Uh, mm -hmm. What was it like kind of seeing that relationship portrayed in that way? It just felt so it's kind of charming and true to real life. I think often, you know, um, children are very contradictory, contrary to what their parents are. So if they are going to say something, then they want to go the other way. And I feel like it's sort of true that, you know, um, it's almost like a, like an, you know, that show Ab Fab. It feels like the mother daughter relationship in that. Um, and, you know, she's a little bit more straight laced and a bit more formal than her mother is because she probably thinks her mom is sort of 
a bit too free and a bit too irreverent all the time. And I think Amina cares too much about what people think. And she probably thinks her mum doesn't care enough what people think. Um, but also what's really moving about that relationship, I think, is that even despite their quarrelling, um, there's a lot of love there. It's just their way of communicating is to kind of shout at each other, which is, I think, true of a lot of mother and daughter relationships. Um, but also at the same time that they both have different interpretations of their faith. It's never explained on the page, but I think what's really moving about it is that, you know, Amina wears a headscarf and her mum doesn't. And it, I think it just sort of rings true that like faith is a very intimate, personal thing. And I love that it never has to be explained in the script why that is, but they both like respect each other so much. Um, yeah, and I think that's what I really love about that relationship. Uh, and the show has been uh, renewed for uh, a second series. Um, and, uh, you know, where we left these characters, uh, they were sort of, you know, coming into their own as a band, uh, you know, not to give anything away, of course, but I'm wondering how much you know uh, about where the show is going. Have you seen scripts? Uh, you know, what what's the process of that right now? I mean, I know absolutely nothing. I mean, Nita has told me nothing. I know she's still, you know, she's still working on it. There's some ideas. Um, I, you know, we keep trying to pitch her ideas about where it should go. Um, but I have no idea where Amina goes. Like, you know, now that she's kind of overcome stage fright a little bit, I wonder what her journey is. I think it's quite open-ended in terms of like the love story between her and um, Asan, where it could go. So maybe there's a bit more to explore in her kind of personal life, maybe. Maybe there's, you know, a rival band. Maybe maybe they try and take over America. Like, I don't know. <laughs> um, and, you know, this season, you're you're also appearing uh, in a completely different role in, in Killing Eve in, in this final se season of that show. Um, playing these two, like uh, playing an assassin in, in Killing Eve, um, you know, which character would you say is closer to your personality? <laughs> you're, you're not... Uh, <laughs> You're not, you're not actually an assassin, I would say. I'd, I'd probably say Amina is closest to me, I think, than um, an assassin <laughs> who embalms bodies. Um, yeah, Pam was definitely a role that, um, probably the most different to anything I've ever played before. But it was uh, a lot of fun, I got to do stunts, which I never get to do, so that was cool. Uh, well, uh, I want to congratulate you on both um, and, and, you know, the recognition you and uh, the series have been receiving. Uh, and, and thank you so much for talking with me about it. It's, it's uh, been a pleasure talking with you. It's been really fun talking about it. Thank you so much for having me.